Yeah, good morning to everybody. Uh, this is a course on ordinary differential equations. Ordinary differential equations. popularly known as ODE. So, we will be using this ODE course to represent ordinary differential equations. I am A.K. Nandakumaran from Department of Mathematics, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. In this course, uh, we will be basically covering a no a standard university syllabus. So, all the material covered in most of the Indian universities will be covered in this course, but in addition to the normal syllabus, we, we also plan to introduce certain notions and especially some topics like uh, phase plane analysis, uh, phase portraits, uh, the uh, what is called as the qualitative analysis of differential equations. Uh, so, it is a little uh, more material than what is usually uh, introduced uh, in the university. Thus, this course is going to be very useful not only for the students, especially the MSc students of Indian universities and institutes, uh, it will be really beneficial to the faculty or the teachers who teach this course, because they get a little more idea than what is normally covered in our place. And we uh, want to see this course in a entirely different perspective. In this, this course, uh, uh, we cover approximately in 40 to 45 lectures and uh, three of us are involved in teaching this course. Uh, 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 the P.S. Dati, from T.I. Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, Bangalore. It is basically called T.I.F.R. CAM, Center for Applied Mathematics and Raju K. George. from IIST, Trivandrum, Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology and of course, myself. In the first lecture, this first lecture, uh, we would like to uh, plan to give an overall view of the entire course and at the end of it, uh, we will explain to the end of this first lecture we will explain the material uh, covered in this course. Before that, we will give a various issues, some aspects of this course, uh, why we want to this course and what are the prerequisites uh, required to learn this course, we will be introducing all these things. So, this lecture, the first lecture going to be very general and uh, students will get an uh, and the teachers will get an overall idea of this entire course and that will help them immediately uh, help them immediately to go to a particular module, if they are familiar with certain other modules. So, they do not have to, if they are familiar with certain aspects of differential equation, say all your existence theory, linear equations, everything if you are familiar, you do not have to spend time and you can straight away go into the uh, nor, uh, analysis of linear and non-linear system, phase line, phase portrait, which you probably some of you may not have seen it. On the other hand, if it is a student for the first time and if they want to learn differential equations, uh, they can start including the basics. So, okay. so what are the, so let me begin with uh, the prerequisites required for this course, prerequisites. we expect the both the students and the teachers are familiar with a first course on linear algebra 
we will elaborate little bit there and then the second thing what they need to know about the some notions from analysis, some notions from analysis like uh, convergence, especially the uniform convergence uniform convergence like notions like uh, Lipschitz continuity, Lipschitz continuity something like what are called Arzila Ascoli theorem, Ascoli theorem and uh, some theorems like Banach fixed point theorem, fixed point theorem. And linear algebra, the notions like uh, basis, independence, and uh, you also need to know the concepts like uh, linear operators, matrix representation, representation. the concepts like uh, eigenvalues and things like that, eigenvalues etcetera, you want to know that. So, this is what uh, the prerequisites uh, we expect from uh, this course to fully understand, but to make this course a self sustained course, uh, we will be spending few hours probably 5 to 6 hours in recalling these notions. So, that those who are not fully comfortable with these things get to know what they exactly want to learn, but we definitely recall the entire material basic material we need to know. We may not be able to prove each and everything because it is basically one or two courses additional courses which you should be familiar with. Uh, just to tell you that what you should be familiar with and you can get into that if you are not uh, understood fully from this course about the prerequisites, you can go back and study that material to understand this course. Okay. We want to say before proceeding further, we want I would like to explain to you why we have planned to introduce this course to you, why this course, we want to spend few minutes let me tell you why this course. As you know very well uh, differential equations lies at the heart of analysis, this is the one factor whether it is ordinary differential equations or it is the the partial differential equations, uh, we feel that analysis, uh, the, anal uh, the differential equations really lies at the heart of uh, analysis. And uh, if you look at the history of the development of science and mathematics in particular and more precisely the analysis, the root cause of development of all these notions. Uh, lies at the differential equation, because differential equations models the physical systems uh, and uh, to understand the physical systems uh, you have to learn the differential equations uh, and to develop a systematic theory which we will tell more about it soon and analysis and other mathematics had to be developed and that is what happened in the history of thing. If for example, if you see the development of uh, uh, e e starting with the integral calculus uh, and the basic notions of analysis and then even for the initial developments of uh, uh, complex analysis, these are all happened in probably in the 19th century and then the 20th century the very powerful functional the development of functional analysis the uh, operator theory related to that. Uh, and it is really exploded the development uh, and if you look at really all these things uh, 
you can really see that uh, differential equations uh, uh, is the root cause for developing all these things. But the uh, one of the unfortunate uh, thing is that the analysts themselves have forgotten this fact uh, the differential equations are the root cause for this thing and uh, uh, it is not especially when you are developing the uh, uh, when you develop uh, the a curriculum or a syllabus for differential equations uh, this fact is not taken into account at all and uh, in the process the beauty of differential equations is lost uh, and especially the the interplay between differential equations uh, and with other subjects like analysis the even algebraic topology differential geometry and uh, uh, all the the beauty is lost so if you want to understand differential equations in a beautiful way and the impact on other things uh, you have to understand a certain uh, uh, interplay between the uh, differential equations uh, and uh, the uh, other subjects. So, uh, we will not be able to do it the entire thing, but we want to address uh, this course or teach this course in our 40 uh, our period to see the impact of uh, at least the algebra and geometry. And, uh, but this is a completely different from what you see in a normal uh, standard university course, uh, where a set of artificially created methods uh, uh, are introduced to the students. Uh, and most of the students think that differential equations is a course uh, consisting of a set of methods. Uh, and even this set of methods they may not be aware how this set of methods are coming up. Because if you want to introduce this set of methods you have to get into the analysis and other aspects which is not exhibited in our uh, teaching or in this even in the syllabus it is not uh, exhibited. So, our main motive in this course is to see some aspects of algebra and analysis uh, as I mentioned there. That is why this preliminaries you have to prerequisites uh, you have to go through it. But definitely uh, as a for example, if you want to uh, if you want to see one example to show that in, in this introduction look at the eigenvalues of the matrix. It is introduced in a very uh, casual manner, but uh, most of the students uh, do not get an impact of these eigenvalues. But after studying this course you can see that how the Sagan values are and its Jordan decompositions are used so powerfully in analyzing the linear and non-linear systems and especially understanding the stability analysis phase plane phase portrait you can see. So, it uh, automatically motivates if you understand the linear algebra it motivates not only the differential equations uh, it is also get uh, good enough motivations why we study uh, analysis uh, uh, the eigenvalues of a matrix and more generally in functional analysis the use of spectral theory. And all these uh, developments uh, in the other subjects of course, in fact help to, to understand differential equations. This, uh, so, it is a give and take policy and which we want to show it to, to the students and that is why we want to uh, see the course in this one. So, let me continue uh, little more about that one uh, little more about this introduction to uh, differential equations. Probably the beginning of in, uh, differential equations started from the uh, attributed to the uh, development attributed to Newton and Leibniz uh, after the invention of the differential and integral calculus. And so, the early work uh, comes from Newton, Leibniz and Bernoulli probably starting from the late 17th century. And there are other people like in addition to the Newton, Leibniz uh, basically the main people Newton, Leibniz, Bernoulli all this early early part of the century many Bernoulli there are 2, 3 Bernoullis and then there are other many other people contributed to something like Euler, Lagrange, Laplace, uh, 
there are many people that are, I will not be able to write in some uh, all the names Le Euler, Lagrange, Laplace, Abel, there are many many people like Poincare and many other people over the Fourier of course you can't miss that Fourier, Gauss and many other people. And if you look at in the early part of this th uh, thing uh, the main issue was to address the physical problems. So, if you have a particular physical problem you model it uh, and the model turns out to be differential equations may be ordinary differential equations it can be partial differential equations or integral equations is anything. So, the issue was to solve that differential equation you also have to understand that this is a pre analysis era the 17th century and early part of it and 18th century are all pre analysis era where even proper definitions of functions convergence continuity are all not available. So, the idea was to obtain the solutions to your differential equations which represents uh, the uh, which represents actually the physical models and derive solutions in whatever way obtain functions in the simple form and uh, uh, you predict your physical phenomena uh, and uh, that is uh, and the early methods in these directions were integrating factors and separation of variables uh, etcetera. But soon in the uh, the people like Euler and other uh, mathematicians realized that uh, making an attempt uh, to solve a differential equations is futile and the reason is that they were trying to develop even though it is uh, each differential equations represent different ph physical phenomena and trying to solve it separately they want trying to develop a systematic theory for the differential equations uh, uh, that uh, that was the beginning of the, the thing. And the realization came uh, that uh, making uh, devising explicit methods to solve differential equations is a futile attempt, and that even stands today. The differential equations which you can exactly solvable are very very limited, and uh, most of the practical problems uh, there are no explicit solutions. So, that's uh, where it comes. So the uh, and especially it is in this scenario you have to see the qualitative analysis like existence, uniqueness theory, stability analysis, large time behavior all that uh, you want to do it. And that is where the analysis geometry uh, and uh, uh, linear algebra and other uh, mathematics development is important uh, to understand the differential equations. So, uh, so really a second phase of differential equations uh, started from the beginning of 19th century where the most of the analysis also started to develop. So, what do you uh, so, so we will uh, see these things in the coming lectures. So, uh, uh, let us begin. Uh, uh, so, what is the uh, uh, basic differential equation? If you look at what uh, the most easiest differential equations uh, probably can be coming from dy by dt is equal to f of t, you see. And then, so this problem all of you know after the study of integral calculus. So, the, this problem is nothing but your integral calculus problem. This is just to convey to you that uh, integral calculus problem. So, what do you say given a function you want to determine y of t. So, attempting to solve this precisely your fundamental theorem of calculus and other things will come into play. And uh, the beginning of equations is of course, Newton's second law of motion you will have the all of you are familiar with this kind of equations uh, the which represents the second law of motion. Of course, this can be written as a first order system if you put x dot is equal to v then you will have m v dot is equal to minus f of t. So, you see you can view this uh, second order equations thing. So, here is a one point I want to tell I will uh, tell little more about these things as we go along this introduction and throughout the lectures you will see the importance of uh, these equations. So, and another way of the thing you view differential equations uh, as a dynamical system and 
this is the view we would like to pursue throughout the, this uh, most of the time we will be pursuing this thing dynamical systems uh, where you can view y t is a trajectory uh, y t uh, trajectory of a or a motion of a particle in some space if it is a three dimensional it will be a motion of the particle you can say the motion of the satellite or you can say the motion of a missile or motion of any planet or anything. So, the other thing that way the dynamical system point of view gives a better feeling about your differential equations and you can see a plenty of examples you are going to see different examples different thing throughout to this course you will be seeing it and uh, what do you say again you see that t is your independent variable and y is your dependent variable. So, given time t given independent variable t you will see your solution y t which is the trajectory of this thing. Okay. So, let me uh, just see so what is a differential equation basically what is a differential equation what is a differential equation. As you see which you are going to see sir, formally it is nothing but a relation. So, you will have a uh, independent variable t and you will have an unknown function which a function of v, y, uh, t and you will have its derivatives it depending on what type of problem it can also come d square y by d t square and so on you can go up to d power n by y by d t power n and you will have a relation connecting this cause. So, formally I can define a differential equation is a relation connecting a independent variable in if it is a motion of a trajectory you can think t is a time variable, but it ne not necessarily the time all the time you will see other types of examples and y is the unknown variable and the uh, its derivatives and relation connecting with that one and this n is basically called the n is the order of the differential equation order of the differential equation. So, for example, if you have a first order if you want to understand a first order equation first order equation is nothing but a, a relation connecting t y t and p y by d t even to understand this equation is not easy. So, most of the time you will be seeing a something a simpler form of this equation where you will be having d y by d t is equal to g of t y t and this is the differential equation which we may most of the time we will be addressing it as I say here this and this are not the same if you want to get you should be able to solve your d y by d t from this relation in terms of t and y and in general that will not be possible. So, but we will restrict it to a different because this is a much general category this is a more general category and this one is a particular case of this differential equations. And for a second order equation if you want to see that we will not go further second order you will have a differential equation connecting t y of t and d y by d t you see d y by d t equal to oh sorry you will have d square y also you will have d square y by d t square is equal to 0. So, this represents a second order equation and we will in addition to that there is a classification called linear differential equation and non-linear differential equation. So, we will have a set of lectures on first order second order linear equations and also an nth order which will be converting to a system of you know. So, we will have a separate analysis separate study about this equation and then there will be a general study of uh, first order equations as well as the first order system uh, uh, we will do its studies and we will explain little more about this thing. So, if you have more than one independent variable instead of just one independent variable one independent variable t and one dependent variable y you have an equation 
but on the other hand if you have more than one unknowns it will lead to a system of differential equations. On the other hand if you have more than one independent variable say t s etcetera and it will lead to partial differential equations. So, we will not be doing anything regarding the partial differential equation in this course and that is an entirely something different. So, now we want to explain little bit about what is called a, a initial value problem because what we are going to do is initial value problem. So, let me explain which is normally called IVP. So, whenever you see IVP it is nothing but initial value problem. So, let me start with your integral easiest problem called the integral calculus problem y t is equal to f of t. You have to understand that f of t depends only on t. So, when you are given such a relation the integral calculus problem tells you that you want to find given f you want to solve your y of t and this is formally you can write it as all of you would have seen this thing you write this as integral of say I use the word f of s d s or f of t d t does not matter. So, you will write f of t d t and probably a constant this is very clear because if you take if you have one solution to this problem integral calculus problem which you are familiar at the 12th level then you can add a constant to that you will get this uh, that will also be a solution. So, the solution definitely is not unique if you have one solution you will have can always add a constant to get another solution, but what you essentially telling in the entire integral calculus problem uh, what the fundamental theorem essentially tells you if you really look at the fundamental theorem carefully it tells you that these are all the solutions which you want to do that. Okay. So, if you have one solutions of this form and the integral calculus tells you that if f is a continuous function which we will not be covering here, but you can see that such a thing you can be defined the integral can be defined uh, using the concept of area that is an another issue and what the finally tells you that all solutions to this problem are given by this one. Okay. So, this indicates if you wanted to have a particular solution. So, you can think that as I said the y t may be representing a trajectory. So, there will be one trajectory if you have there will be many many trajectories to this solution is possible that that is what if you have one uh, trajectory something like that. If you have one trajectory then you can add a constant to that trajectory and you can get many solution. So, if you want to find a particular solution going from here if you so that is a very natural physical problem you are in a place particular place at time t naught you will be at this point uh, y t naught you will be at this point y t naught at time t naught and then this equation tells you that you know the velocity or all, all the time this exactly it gives you an f t. So, you are given a position and then you are uh, at the, the in what we call it an initial time this time t naught is called the initial time. And then you have the f t is the velocity f t is the velocity at all is the velocity and that is a standard physical problem. If you know the initial position and velocity at all the time and your job is to determine the trajectory. So, this constitutes a reasonable a good physical problem d y by d t equal to f of t and then y at t naught your initial position y naught is given to you given and this together is called the initial value problem. And 
this can be this really motivate and this can be done for any general thing. So, if you have a general differential equation which we will be addressing in this course d y by d t equal to the f of t it may not, not only depends on the independent variable t it also depends on the position at that time and y at t naught is y naught is given. This is your initial value problem you see you have a very nice way of understanding that. The, there is a so much difference here because in this case your dynamics what we call it namely the velocity is given to you a priori you do not need to know that, that. So, the velocity does not depend where you are it depends only on the time. Here the problem is that the velocity not only depends on the time and it also depends on the position making it a the in general this is a very non-linear problem it is a highly non-linear problem ok and uh, that is a and the difficulty what you can anticipate here even such a simpler problem to solve uh, like a simple integral calculus the beautiful theory of integral calculus is developed and it was not an easy job. So, that immediately we can have an anticipation if such a simple looking problem is difficult to solve you can uh, really anticipate a much deeper difficulties uh, in this more general problem. So, you are trying to basically invert a differential operator of this thing and trying to solve that one. That is why it is uh, becoming a really a non trivial a, a non trivial uh, theory is required to develop to understand these kind of problems. So, you can uh, you can really feel the as you go along uh, the difficulties uh, coming here. So, if you have a second order equation so a second order equation in a slightly simpler form let me write to here y of t y of t and y prime of t that is the s suitable here you may have an option but let me tell you one thing. So, I let me convert this differential equation into a system of differential equation which generally possible. So, I will put y 1 of t is equal to y of t and I put a another variable. So, I introduce two uh, dependent variable y 1 which is nothing but y and y 2 is nothing but y 1 prime of t that is equal to y of t. So, with this together if you apply this here what is this one y 1 prime of t is equal to y of t and then y 2 prime of t what is y 2 prime of t is nothing but y 1 double prime of t that is nothing but y double prime of t uh, yeah this is y prime of t. So, y double prime of t that is nothing but f of t y 1 of t and y 2 of t you see. So, you have a system of two first order equations system of two first order equations first order equations you see. And naturally if you look go back and see each first order system so, if you want to understand the uh, first order system of course, depends on this is y of t. So, this will be y, uh, y 1 prime of t is nothing but uh, this is y 2. Uh, so, this is y 2 of t not y 1 of t. So, if you look at this equation this is a first order equation for y 1 and hence if you look at the uh, previous uh, page what I said that if you have a first order equation you have one initial condition basically because that is a uh, standard problem. and so you require one condition for y 1 and another condition initial condition for y 2. So, if you want to have it is a kind of nice problem you need uh, uh, an initial condition for y 1 at t naught and you need 
an initial condition for y 2 also. So, one of the possible equation. So, an initial value problem for a second order equation looks like this. There may be other possibilities which you may see as the course proceeds. So, you will have y of t y prime of t together with one condition for y at t naught y naught and you need condition for this is for y 1. So, you need a condition for y 2 that is nothing but y prime of t naught. So, it is a y 1. So, this is a standard initial value problem which again you will be studying this equation and especially you will have a little more detailed study about this equation in the case of linear equation. We will explain when the stage comes to understand the linear equations as this is an introduction we will not get into the detailed thing. But as far as second order equations are concerned, uh, there is another interesting uh, set of problems called boundary value problems, boundary value problems. Uh, quite often the second order equations may be defined uh, in a just an interval a b. There are many many applications especially a set of the equations like coming from stum liouville systems uh, representing the vibra mechanical problems and vibration problems. Uh, so, we are going to spend anyway some time on the stum liouville and other things uh, where you have a second order equations and the conditions are not defined at the initial values, but the conditions are defined at the boundary value. So, the boundary value problem in short form we call it BVP and the applications why boundary value co problem comes we will also see when we introduce the uh, stum liouville systems as well as uh, uh, the general boundary value problem and uh, you will see all that one. So, typically a boundary value problem may look like uh, f of t y of t y prime of t and this is for t in a b. So, it is a prescribed the interval with uh, you can have a very general boundary value problem. So, I can uh, put it something like uh, alpha into uh, y t a plus beta into y prime at a is equal to something like 0 if you want and one more condition uh, uh, something like uh, alpha or some other parameter you can pause it when you will have a solution you will see y at b plus beta y prime at b is a general for example, if you take y prime of a equal to 0 or b take if you do not have beta equal to 0, alpha equal to 1. So, you have a y a equal to 0, y b equal to 0 that will be the general uh, general uh, that will be a particular case of that. So, you will be studying. So, basically you have an equation prescribed in certain interval and you have the boundary conditions. So, and why we study just like we have, have a motivation for the initial value problem it is along the trajectory you will have the motivation when we introduce because I do not want to spend uh, time now on that boundary value problem in the introductory lecture, but you will get to know about it soon. So, with that uh, uh, we will uh, uh, spend a little more time on one more issue. Uh, Let us see whether we can complete everything what is something like a solution concept quickly solution concept. There are various things this is a actually a bigger section uh, we will not get into uh, the more complicated concepts of solution concept which are indeed useful in applications, uh, but we want to just uh, tell you something about uh, uh, the concept which I want to introduce uh, the nor uh, the normal procedure when you have a differential equation which started uh, 300 years back definitely a differential equation associated with a uh, physical problem you want to get solutions in the form what you like it in the 
uh, in terms of simple functions or whatever it is. Uh, but as you see even for the integral calculus problem d y by d t equal to f of t you already know that there are certain f t you may get a representation y t in terms of integral of f of t d t, but integrating the functions in a very closed form may not be possible you see. So, if you can get a solution y of t, if you can rep, uh, write something y of t equal to something this is called an explicit solution you can write explicit solution. As why I am what I am trying to say that writing down your y of t quite often in an explicit this is more or less explicit uh, uh, you may not be able to calculate the integral and write in terms of that, but still this is explicit. But when you go to more general equations of the form d y by d t equal to f of t y t getting an uh, expression in the y of t may not be possible. What you may get is that a relation is possible that you may get a relation connecting t and y possibly t and y even this may not be possible that is why I said solution concepts are different. If you can get it here and this is what you most of the time the methods quite often restrict to this one not beyond that. So, connecting t and y and you will see examples as we go along and when we present examples in our uh, study you will see equations where you get relations uh, connect and this is called what are called the implicit form in the implicit form. For example, if you get a solution of the form y square plus t square equal to 1 example if you get suppose your solution represents in this form t square plus y square equal to 1 it is not possible to solve y uniquely which all of you know it. So, you will have a relations uh, connecting t you may have a relation connecting t and y and we call this also a solution to this problem even though you are not able to solve the y in terms of t. So, that is a implicit relation. What I want to do here one step further even getting this in the either in the implicit for explicit form or in the implicit form may not be possible and that is where your analysis will come into play. That does not mean that this equation the differential equation has no solution if you are unable to get an explicit or implicit form it is not possible to conclude uh, the exactly that this does not have an explicit form it does not have a solution you may have a solution which you may not be able to represent and that is where the theoretical study of existence and things into come into picture and the numerical computation of these differential equations comes into play. Because uh, the engineers and uh, scientists uh, other science people who working scientists who do the problem they want solutions uh, and if you are unable to provide solutions in the explicit or implicit form what do you do you cannot stop there you have to tell them that you can do something else uh, and that is uh, one of the major aim of this problem. And in the our university syllabus essentially restricted to these two aspects uh, and our aim of this course is go beyond this ok. Uh, so, uh, I, I will uh, quickly uh, tell you a little more thing. Uh, uh, thing, uh, thing. So, what are the things uh, what are the issues we would like to address through the course of course, we have to address the issue why which you are familiar methods to solve methods to solve differential equations uh, as we pro, but we do this thing, but our concentration is not just this one how do you get that methods. Uh, what is ideas behind that methods that is what we will be concentrating and uh, then the second part I told you you will not have an implicit or explicit relation some of the ideas which you want to do that one existence uniqueness why existence is required uh, unless you tell them that there is a solution even to proceed for numerical computation. Uh, 
uh, how do you proceed if you do not know anything about the uh, equation and you may try to develop numerical schemes you end up with false results. Uh, but mathematically if you can tell that uh, you have the existence and uniqueness uh, the you can do the numerical computations uh, and this is where your play in the analysis will come into play. And there is another interesting fact which probably you may not have understood or may not you heard in your university system what are called the continuous dependence. One of the very very crucial notions together with existence uniqueness and continuous thing. This is for practical purposes because if you formulate if you do a modeling for your differential equation it will be an approximation for example, the dynamics f or the initial conditions phi naught may not be available to you. You may it may be coming through some data. In fact, even the explicit form of f may not be available. What you may be available is a finite set of data for f. Using the finite set of data using the approximation schemes you may be able to approximate f. So, you may not have f and y naught exactly may not be available exactly may not be available. What you may get is then approximate value of f bar and y naught bar you see. So, you are will be solving the equation you do not have f and y naught, but you are theoretically studying the equation with the using f and y naught but actually what you may be available may be f bar and y naught bar. So, you are actually may be solving your differential equation with an approximate data, but what is the guarantee that the solution you obtain using the approximate data is an approximation to actual solution you see that one that may not be true you will see examples again in this course even if you use approximate data the solution may. So, you have to need conditions you have to get tell them under these conditions uh, you may be able to get uh, an approximate solution and that is what we will be discussing in the continuous data. And then after continuous dependence of course, you have numerical thing you already told you why you need to uh, understand numerical computation because you may not have a solution, but engineers and uh, scientists wants that they want values. And the last and important part which we will be covering in this thing what is called the qualitative analysis, qualitative analysis you see. This is also there are multipurpose one of the reasons is that in many situations you may not be interested in actual solution. For example, if y t is the solution your interest is uh, you do not want to know what is y t at each time your interest is the what happens to y t as time progresses. Okay. You may not be interested in the whole path you may be interested in either limit t tends to 0 you may be interested in limit t tends to infinity or limit t tends to 0 whatever it is of y t and such type of asymptotic behavior or you want to know more about the geometric picture about it and this you will be seeing in the uh, various things like uh, this is involves in qualitative analysis and you will see the face plane analysis, face portrait uh, and whether your trajectory is stable, whether your trajectory is unstable and uh, all that we will be seeing and our ultimate aim in this course if you are successful is to see some sort of periodic solutions which is the one of the famous theorem called Poincare Bendixson theorem uh, that we may not uh, we are not sure we will reach that one because uh, giving a proof of Poincare Bendixson theorem involves much deeper understanding. Uh, with that let me now quickly in 5 uh, minutes uh, tell you about our module which is already available to you. Um, yeah. So, this is our whole course going to be here. Uh, so, uh, we will uh, uh, start with uh, to get you a feeling we will uh, start with uh, some motivation that is uh, uh, what I have given in this lecture 
I hope it is motivated uh, you to uh, learn differential equations. If it is not motivated, I am sure over the period of time you will get motivated and uh, my colleagues will motivate you more than me as we go along. So, uh, so we may spend some probably uh, 4 lectures in module 1, you see, uh, where after this lecture I may spend around uh, 3 or maybe 3 lectures, I am not sure, we will go along. We will give you some real life examples, uh, especially uh, like uh, dashboard, uh, the thing population growth and some non-linear systems may be a satellite example either I will give it or you will see later and we are giving these examples and we recall these examples as and when required in our course. So, there are many many examples which we cannot uh, give, you can give examples of ordinary differential equation in every field of science and engineering, but we have chosen some classical examples nothing new, most of them are classical examples available in most of the books, uh, but we will do it and we use that examples to do that one, that is what in the thing. Then as I said that next step is our module 2, we will give you the basics which I said here, we will do we will whatever preliminaries which I explained, uh, and then to begin with before going to the serious general theory our next module is module 3 in which we will restrict these are the easier equation which you can understand. So, we will spend some time on your first order linear this is a very special class of differential equation and the interesting thing is that you can convert that problem eventually to an integral calculus problem and main aim is to motivate you the some of the notions like integrating factors uh, and the concept of exact differential equations. Then immediately you will go to the second order linear differential equation, you can see that things are not even for the linear differential the second order equation, the life is not that easy, here you could convert it back, uh, but there is a very nice interesting things here and it is not easy to solve the differential equation. On the first order linear differential equation, you have a reasonable good theory. Second order also you have the theory, but solving. So, you need some methods of solving also if possible, but we will explain to that in the coming lecture. And then we will see the some part of the theory, namely the general existence uniqueness theory. So, basically we will give you different methods to prove the existence and uniqueness continuous dependence. Uh, we will uh, start with uh, the first order equations, uh, but then we will also go to the uh, uh, next thing and there are different methods will be we will also introduce some methods of solving. After that we will go to second linear system. Here the powerful use of linear algebra you will be seeing it. So, we will represent all the linear algebra and you see uh, some stability theory for the linear systems will be seen here and some periodic solutions and stability will be introduced here. And this is a class of boundary where you will see a special, we will spend not too much time, we can spend more time on one, but we will see some oscillation theorems and examples and you will see the Bessel's function, Hermit, Legendre equations all that interesting example and we will see something a comparison theorems from one differential equation to other equations. And this part uh, our one of the important part of our module which are not really covered, not at all covered in the university syllabus is the qualitative analysis. Already we have done something in the linear system, you will see the, uh, the various stability analysis, Leibniz stability, you will especially the geometry and phase portrait in these 2 D systems and uh, this is our ambition to do something on Poincare Bendixson and hope we will do. We will also give few lectures, we do not spend too much time because it will go beyond our uh, number of lectures we planned for a one semester course, 
uh, is uh, difficult, but we will try to give little bit on the uh, introduction to two point boundary value problems. So, and that is what we are planning to do in this entire course. So, let me complete this thing, I have few more minutes in this uh, 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 just uh, I have two to three to four minutes. So, let me conclude the entire thing uh, with uh, drawing a schematic diagram. So, you have basically you have the physical phenomena, physical phenomena, phenomena. you will have the physical laws here and that is what you have started with your all or everything the whole science is that right physical phenomena and physical science. This to understand the earliest things were observations, observations initially that is done if you look at our astronomy everything is observation and uh, uh, that started with observation in the later part by Galileo and other people who have started experiments is not just experiment you create labs and do the experiments and then of course, data collection etcetera on to understand that physical phenomena you have done that. Okay. So, here you will have that you see using the mathematics available the physical laws and these thing together you do the mathematical modeling you have the mathematical model here you see correct mathematical model. Here is what if you want to understand this one here is the place you have to do the analysis you see this is where you want uh, do, trying to do if you can have the mathematical model if you can solve if you can explicitly understand everything no problem use the mathematical model using this thing interpret your physical phenomena understand the physics and engineering behind it using that one. For that you need the analysis methods to solve it and uh, of course, uh, you will have the computations and the aim of the course is in this box we are only here nothing else we are not here we are only here. So, we are restricting to this box and after doing the analysis and mathematics here is where your the development of mathematics coming development of mathematics maths. and once you do the analysis and methods of computations your model may not be very perfect this will also help you this is a two way guy. So, after doing that if the model does not predict you using the analysis properly here use the analysis and mathematics here to improve upon here do further experiments maybe further data collection further of thing you improve your mathematical model. So, you will come here further again. So, there is a circle between these things you understand this one on this mathematical model may be this uh, one simpler thing, but you will have other issues like in the mathematical model where uh, you will have control and other things like uh, this is important now, because you have a Mars mission you see you apply control uh, to guide your trajectory. If the trajectories are not taking path you have to correct it what the ISRO is doing currently. So, I should mention that one. So, that leads to another branch of mathematics entirely called control theory we, our aim is that not that one, but if you want to spend time yes you can do that with this uh, is uh, we will finish this introduction and uh, we, uh, we, we will finish this introductory lecture we will start now next day with uh, some of the uh, examples uh, real life examples thank you.